Hello everybody, I'm John Zadar and this is February 7th, another Monday. You're watching On Top and Hot, brought to you by our free Discord group, Titan Trading. We like to talk about OTC stocks and penny stocks and NFTs and cryptocurrencies. So if any of these are of interest to you, come on over folks, we got a seat just waiting for you. So on this show, I like to talk about OTC stocks and penny stocks specifically. I go out and I look for stocks that have got something going for them. And today I found a few, more than three actually, and a bunch have low floats. So if you're interested to see what I got, come on. All right, the first one we're jumping into is JPEX, J-P-E-X, JPEX Global finished today at 0 0.0165 after a big tumbo. She's had a big gain of almost 61%. She's on the pink tier. She's current. She's got a verified profile and a verified transfer agent, so she looks good in that regard. She is a self-proclaimed shell company. That means she's not making any money. Hasn't reported any, but that's okay. Everybody knows that, so it's legit. Now, this company isn't doing anything right now. Actually, they are. They are doing something. They just aren't making any money. They just made some deals with a company called Vmost, and they've got other things going on. However, a filing came out on Friday, which puts everything into jeopardy. This company was on the expert market. Uh, about uh, nine months ago, this company failed to file. They weren't putting in their filings, so they got yanked off the market into the expert market. You can't buy or sell the stock while it's there. They're not delisted. They're just in timeout. Well, it turns out there was no management, literally no management of the company, nobody to file. So Alpha Ridge came along, went to the courts, petitioned for custodianship of the company, and apparently got it. Well, a filing came out on Friday that says, uh-uh, maybe not, and that made it drop. But today, people see it as an opportunity and are flooding into it. So what sort of volume was there today? Well, it jumped from 36 million to almost a quarter billion, over a quarter billion. So you're looking at over five times as much, 36 million multiplied times five. What is their share structure? real high. We got 1.3 billion shares in the float. That's quite a lot. Uh, financials, well, they're not going to have any, are they? And there's no disclosures to really talk about at this time. So all we have is the news, but there's no news. All we really have is that filing. So this is the filing that the courts put out at three in the morning on Friday. And they basically are talking about the entire deal where Alpha Ridge came forward to get custodialship of this company. Then they said now the court further finds after review that on February 3rd, an opposition and counter motion to the motions to discharge custodialship was filed. In other words, the opposition stated that Alpha Ridge Capital LLC should be discharged as the custodian. And they are going to have this court date on February 23rd and 24th to figure out who exactly has control of this company. So everything that's been going on, as I said, is now in jeopardy. They've made deals, they've been pushing forward, and now someone says, uh-uh-uh, that ain't your company. That's ours. So. Let's go take a look at this chart. It had a huge fall yesterday and people see an opportunity today. Are we going to see an opportunity for the day after? I don't know. So we're looking at JPEX. That is a four hour, six month chart. Doesn't look really bad. She's been above the 200 most of this time. Came down here, crushed it. You can see there's a W there. Normally when you see a W, there's going to be a climb on the other side, as there was, and she came back down and then had a humongous drop. I mean, everything, the MACD, the RSI, everything fell. And what day do you think that was? Friday. Yeah, when that filing came out, a lot of people did see it. But if we come in on that five-day, five-minute view, you can see after that fall, she landed hard down here just under a penny. Pre-market this morning brought it back up to about a penny and a half. Gave it a 50% jump right there in the morning. And we can't trade pre-market after market normally, not for OTC stocks. So you got to wait until the bell opens. And she jumped another 50% after the bell, fell just a wee bit, and went sideways all day. And she looks like, under normal circumstances, she could start recovering. But I've got to say, folks, until the 23rd and the 24th and a final decision comes out of the courts about 
who has control of this company, I wouldn't expect a recovery. Now, normally I would say, sure, she should come back up to there about uh, two and a half to seven cents. So I'd say, yeah, you've got some good gains. Even getting close to the 200, even with this haul coming up and pushing it. But until that news comes out, I think this is going to fall. But it may just go sideways and nobody's going to move an inch until they know one way or the other. And if it comes back on approval, I think this thing's going to get a bounce just out of excitement. Not out of true value, not out of anything like that. Just a celebration. I think JPEX will probably jump if on the 24th we hear that Alpha Ridge got custodial ship. If not, well, I hope you know how to short stocks because this thing's probably going to tumble. Ooh, it'll probably go down to the triple zero zone. That's just a feeling. Let's go take a look at a couple of other stocks that really got some good gains today because of Bitcoin's movement. So the first of the two stocks that have made gains today because Bitcoin is growing is CBTC, Extra Bitcoin Inc. You think? <laughs> They finished the day at 0.0072, really a low price, with 44% gain. She's on the pink tier and she's all verified and looks good. And the company strictly mines Bitcoin. This is what they do. So obviously when Bitcoin goes up, they go up as well. So what was the relative volume today? Not bad. About a 700% increase from 7 million to 50 million. Not bad at all. Share structure. Wish I could say that was not bad at all. No, we got almost 2 billion shares in the float. Not real great at all. Her finances, uh, not too strong. We got to take these three zeros that they tell us to put behind here. And that tells us she made $5,000 September's quarter of last year. Don't see anything current here. And disclosures, I don't think they have anything current. Uh, no, not since 2021. So basically, all you got is she's running because Bitcoin ran. So let's go take a look at that chart. That is CBTC. That is the six-month, four-hour chart for this. You can see she was under the 200 for half of that time and then exploded here in October and November. I've got to presume that is when Bitcoin was exploding as well. And then when Bitcoin started to fall, this fell. Now, I'm only presuming a lot of the Bitcoin price because I truly don't follow Bitcoin. I hear about it, but it doesn't stick in my memory. However, I know Bitcoin has been recovering right now. It has had a nice jump. And so has this stock. The last two days, it has been kicking up. Let's look at that five day, five minute. So you've got days of it just sitting here on top of the 200 doing nothing. And then the last two days, it has taken off nicely. It started down here at uh, just under a half a penny, 0 0.004. And it is now at 0 0.007. So you're looking at about a 70% gain from two days ago. 44% today. The SMA looks good. It's climbing. We got a crossover here. Looks like it's trying to cross back actually right now. And we got a pullback. But this all comes down to Bitcoin. If Bitcoin keeps climbing, chances are 85% that this is going to continue climbing too. And it's not a bad price. Still under a penny. And when it hits two cents, you would have 100% of your gains. Actually, if you bought it right now at this price, at less than a penny and a half, you would have 100% gains on this. I don't follow Bitcoin, but stocks like this do. Let's go take a look at that other stock that's following Bitcoin. Now this next crypto stock is real fancy. It's on the top tier of the OTC market, the QX. This is ticker BBKCF. This is big digital assets. They finished a day at $1.13 with 63% gains. And as I said, they're on the QX. This is the most transparent of all the OTC tiers. It's the top, the most transparent. They could easily be on the NASDAQ if they had a $3 price and they asked Oblis. So what does this company do? Well, they basically got two products. They have the Blockchain Intelligence Group, which is for enabling law enforcement, governments to on a forensic level, track cryptocurrency for illegal activity. Their other product they have is BitRank Verified. This gives a risk score for cryptocurrencies so that banks, ATMs, and exchanges know what is safe to trade. So that is what they do. But 
it doesn't really matter because they're involved with Bitcoin and that is just all it takes when Bitcoin goes up these companies go up so what sort of relative volume did they get well they normally do about a half a million today they did two million so you're talking 400 percent increase share structure uh, I did look this up they have 220 million in their float it's not a bad float for the QX not a bad float could be lower of course we like lower and uh, financials well we really don't care about that but we'll take a look well they're making money now aren't they Shh. now that was back in 2020 do we have anything here more current uh, September of 2021 that quarter they made just over two million dollars and got to keep most of it they got that 50 uh, 50,000 you got to take those three zeros and put that behind there the cost of revenue that could be what it actually cost in gas fees just to get their stuff I don't know all right so let's go take a look at the chart and see how this fared with Bitcoin rising today this is BBKCFs that's six month four hour chart and we have a high here of a dollar 75 six months ago and now just a little bit ago we have a low of 53 cents she's been under the 200 most of this time had a big strong surge above it but then started to fall and just hasn't stopped until it hit that low bubble and it's just been going sideways until these last two days when Bitcoin started growing again and it has just shot through that 200 SMA let's take a look at the 20 day one hour right she's right under the 200 hit that low came back up not a whole lot of extra energy until the Bitcoin started moving and zooming in on that five day five minute today was great I mean she is really tearing it up all the SMAs are perfect I mean that is perfect the 200 is curving up there's your 50 your 200 hole 20 and 10 it couldn't get any more beautiful than that look at that tsunami that is a blue rocket shooting up and we are on fire folks this just looks dynamite this looks like it's gonna take off in the morning for sure I would think so we have even a little smidge more after hours to show you that it's going up I don't even see a whole lot of pullback here I like this for tomorrow morning and if Bitcoin keeps growing why shouldn't this one keep going so you may want to put this on your watch list now let's go take a look at some stocks that ran today that has some real small floats that you might still be able to catch something on first low float stock we're looking at is reos 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 anybody here familiar with the wizard of oz all right she finished today at 0 0.067 45% up today she's on the pink tier and current she's got all her green ticks looks real good however she is a shell risk that means she is supposed to be reporting revenues but isn't let's see if that be the case her annuals nada and her quarterlies nothing there either so she is a shell risk so what does this company do well they are supposedly an oil and gas exploration company and about three weeks ago maybe four now they put out a letter of intent to acquire a gas and oil company and that did get the stock to move but that's not why it's moving today it's moving today because the company themselves on their Twitter account put out a tweet and we'll take a look at that so what sort of excitement was built around that tweet about 500 percent worth we went from 328,000 shares to 1.7 million now you want to know what the float is because I said it's a low float we have 14 and a half million shares 14.6 if you want to get technical now it's not as low as it could be but that is a low float nonetheless we've already seen the financials and her disclosures the only current one is about that deal that they want to make and we can take a look at that just so you can see it here real star energy corporation executes letter of intent with an experienced oil and gas company now like I said it's great news it's probably gonna help them if they get the deal together but that's not why it's running right now it's running today because as I said real star energy's Twitter account put out a tweet as they say five hours ago REOS management is pleased to announce that after discussions with OTCM it had started the process to move to the OTCQB and that's it they want to uplist they didn't use the word uplist but that's what's going on they're moving from pink to the QB or at least starting the process now I'm not saying what their intentions are I'm just saying in many cases 
there are companies that say this and it is still months before these things happen. So there's no timeline here, but in either case, that's what's got this stock running. Let's go take a look at the chart and see it. So we're looking at REOS. This is a six month, four hour chart. And you see those huge green bars? That's what you get with the low float. This big bar right there, just so you get an idea, that's 100%. So you can gauge all the other bars off of that. And you got another 100% here and another 100% there. So they're not rare. These happen often. And this one, this one back here, look at the volume. There's hardly no volume there. This one here had a lot of volume. This one did too. So you can see she can react with a little or a lot of volume. Let's come in on that 20 day, one hour view. So we had that big pop here with lots of volume and it fell behind it very quickly. Fell underneath the 50 again, hit a low bubble and is bouncing off of that low bubble. Now, we had a tweet today right behind the low bubble. Was it timed that way? I don't know, but it's quite convenient. Let's look at that five day, five minute. So she was meandering downhill very slowly until she hit that low bubble, bounced up, fell back again, and I'm gonna presume right about here is where the tweet came. The tweet said it was five hours, and right now I'm about six o'clock, so that would put it at about 1, 12, somewhere around there, and this big bounce is at uh, 20 after 12. That's 12.30. So yeah, this is the tweet that threw it very, very high. We fell from uh, 47 up to 85, so we're just under 100% there, almost, and then it fell back. Now, if we draw a line at the very top of that surge and the very bottom of that surge, oops, right there. Now find the middle. Now you can do it exact or you can just eyeball it. I'm gonna eyeball it right there. Now when I see a big surge, I expect it to fall back 50% under all conditions, bad or good. That's just what I'm ready for. And if it stays above that 50% mark, the halfway point, I figure it's a strong stock. Now I can go just under and hang on like a monkey. As long as it's right there with that, I feel confident that the stock is going to hold and maintain that value and has a good chance of growing if it just has some market sentiment or more catalyst. And this is right there at the halfway point. Now we do have a crossover here. She's coming down and the RSI is falling as well. So I wouldn't be too quick to jump into this. Um, they're probably going to have a follow-up piece of news on this letter of intent with this company. That would be the one to catch. Look for a filing on the 8Ks. You can see those on the OTC market. You see an 8K come out that closes the deal. It's probably out before the news. So you could actually get in quick and maybe get a good jump off that. Let me show you another low float stock. Now the next stock we're looking at has even a smaller float than the last one. This is a Chinese company, TNMD, Tianrong Medical Group. Finished today at 14.5 cents, 143% gains. On the pink tier and current, and she's got all her green ticks. Looks good. But she too is a shell risk. Let's see if that be the case. Nothing annually. And she did have some money in June of last year, but doesn't look like she's had anything since. Now this company, owns a company called Huan Media. They are the largest railway Wi-Fi media platform in China. So big that they potentially cover 900 million passengers a year. That's more than twice the population of the United States. And they ensure 99% reliability. That's their primary thing. Now they had news about a month and a half ago. They came out with their quarterly report about a month ago, but there hasn't been anything really recent. However, the news, which I will tap into, does show some potential. But why she's running this hard right now, I can't say. But the float is so delicious that I want to at least point this out to you because you may want to put this on your watch list. So what was her relative volume today? Well, it doesn't look like much, but it is about uh, 33%. She went from 16,000 to 20. 7,000. That's right. That's right. I was thinking millions, but it's not. It's thousands. So she didn't have a lot of shares moved today, but she had one heck of a jump. Now, what is her share structure? 
Folks, we are at 6.6 .6 million shares. This is less than half of the last one we looked at. There are no disclosures, there's no financials, so let me show you that piece of news that does have potential. We're just gonna jump into that news here. Now this came out on the 27th of December, so it is kind of old. Now, just before this news, the two days before was a letter of intent to acquire this company. Two days later, boom, done deal. They had acquired it. Today, the company announced that its wholly owned subsidiary, its China-based Huan Media, has completed its majority stake acquisition of a Chinese financial service company. I'm not going to say that. And thereby launching the company's entrance into China's booming $1.5 trillion financial service sector. The internet has played a major role in the rapid development of China's financial industry. CST, which is what they're calling this, CST has developed processes and collaboration methodologies that link financial institutions, banks, credit bureaus, and retailers and online malls together in order to provide users a flexible and effective financing vehicle for their purchases. And the last thing you need to know is that CST has mainly been focused on the three C's, computers, communications, consumer electronics. They market these things, allowing their users to purchase the cell phones, laptops, tablets, whatever, on payment plans. The users can pay off the purchases in easy monthly payments in time frames that fit their budget. And the company is expanding at a rate of two to three times a year. Now imagine that, a Chinese company that is exploding in the gadgets. That's really what they're doing. Everybody wants gadgets. They're letting you buy them on credit. They're letting you buy them through credit cards and they got all the stores and everybody working with them. So there is a lot of potential here to make money. Why I don't see any financials, I don't know. Hopefully this will change things. Well, of course, I'm starting on a six-month, four-hour chart. This is TNMD. She has been falling most of these six months. She's under the 200 SMA, even under the 50-day SMA. Now, we can see a lot of green bars in here again, the low float. That's why we're looking at this. That bar right there you're looking at, that's about 90% gains. But this bar right there, that's also a 90% gains. You're saying, how's that possible? Well, this only had to go from 13 cents to 26 cents to be 100%. This has to go from 36 all the way up to, what, 72. So this has to travel further for the same 100%. That's why I say if you can get a stock at a price of a penny, all it has to do is go to two cents and you've doubled your money. Here it had to go from 36 to 72, 13 to 26, or one to two. <laughs> right? So she did have a jump today. No rhyme, no reason, no cause, but there it is. And she pushed herself above the 50-day SMA, which she hasn't been over in a long time. Let's focus in on that 20-day, one hour. All right, kind of tough to read here, so I'm going to open that up with a special bar called the Heiken Ashi, if I'm pronouncing that right. You can see the travel now. You can see where the it's actually moving. Looks pretty, doesn't it? So with that jump today, she not only broke the 50-day SMA, she plowed right through it. And let's go take a look at that five-day, five-minute. Now, it doesn't look like much, I know. But see, this is 143% gain, which makes that an 80%, which makes that about 40%. This thing has lots of jumps over and over again. So you've got to put this on your watch list. Now, I don't see a catalyst for tomorrow, but she sure set up for a run. We are red, tsunami, up, up, up. Everything looks great. The problem is she doesn't have any volume. What was it? She normally gets 16,000 and today she had 27 or 25. That's not a lot of shares, but it doesn't take much to move her, does it? So a small hold could really make you some money. I'm not saying that you should jump into it. I'm saying put it on your watch list. With just six and a half million shares, you may catch this thing on a big dip and say, whoa, I'm getting in now. The price is really, really low and it only has to move that far to double my money. All right, we're going to look at one more stock that has even a lower float than this one. And finally, last but not 
well actually it is leased <laughs> this is ticker AMRR the company name is American Metals Recovery and Recycling uh, this finished today at two dollars and thirty two cents with twenty eight percent gains they're on the pink tier they're current and got all their green tick marks so they look good and would you be surprised if I told you they too are a shell company what is it with these companies not making any revenues but getting the biggest gains on the market doesn't make sense I'm not even gonna check the financials I'm gonna take their word for it they're not making any money so what does this company do well they say that they are in the recycling business but as you're gonna see in a piece of news it looks like that's not what they're doing anymore and they're kind of pivoting but I'll let you be the judge of that and the fact of the matter is it is that piece of news that this stock is running on and it came out last week so the fact that it's still running is pretty impressive has it got any more to give I honestly don't know maybe if they have a follow-up to the piece of news we look at but outside of that the only reason I'm showing this to you is because it's float is so minuscule it is so tiny that if this thing takes a dip you're gonna want to get a small hold just to ride it up on that little itty bitty float so what was the relative volume with this company today she normally does 26,000 shares today she did 162,000 not a huge jump but it is a jump and her share structure are you ready for this here we go we have 1.5 million shares in the float that's it folks 1.5 million shares you know how fast that can move with just a little bit of volume all right so what was the news today well it wasn't today actually the news came out on the 4th which was Friday let's take a look at that American Metals Recovery and Recycling Inc completes acquisition of AMR resources operator of one path integrated services they say that they completed the acquisition of AMR resources and the company now owns all the assets exclusively used by one path integrated services business which were divested by one path system now it seems one path is into a lot of things to do with uh, telecommunications networking they have a lot of business solutions this is what they got with the deal and I guess it must be something pretty big it hasn't done anything yet it was only last Friday the news came out but the stock was running since then and like I said it's not about the catalyst it's not about the news it's about this tiny tiny 1.5 million float and what it can do if you catch this stock at the right price let's go see what this chart looks like then pretty strange looking chart that is a six month four hour chart for AMRR really bleak here let me see this is uh that's December so last year she had a problem don't know what the problem was maybe she wasn't on the market but that's pretty bleak and then she came on in December and let's see if she's staying with it yeah that's all through January February so we're looking good here she's back into the game and like I said the news came out on Friday that took a huge jump all the way from 63 cents up to two dollars and 73 cents you're talking almost 400 percent over 300 percent gains then you had a huge jump in the aftermarket another big bounce in the morning now let me change these bars back to what it was <laughs> there we go now let's come in on the 20 day let's see what we got here so it is just these last two days friday and today based on that news obviously it's big news because the company has been doing nothing you can see nothing has been going on so she is starting to fall now she's broken down through her 10-day SMA on the one hour let's come right down to that five day five minute Whew. all right so she took the biggest jump on Friday she went from 60 cents up here to two dollars and 67 cents she hit a high today of three dollars and ten cents but came back down so she's found like an average right around in here right there and I don't know that she's going to go up anymore matter of fact she looks like she could come down now with that little float we just don't have a lot of history to look at here we just can't see what's gonna go on with 1.2 million shares but let's look at one bar this bar here is for five minutes it jumped from a dollar eighty-eight to uh, where are we there? Two sixty-six. 
So you're looking at about a 60% jump when it's over a dollar. When it's over a dollar. If this thing ever crashes and comes down way down here low, you may want to pick some up because when it gets down this low, I can see these bars being humongous at this point. So there you go. Not a lot of catalyst, but a real small float. So AMRR belongs on your watch list because if this has a horrible, super bad day and the price comes way down, you may want to take advantage of it with a little hold that can multiply out three, four, five hundred 500 times for you. I told you we had a variety of stocks today. Now personally, I really like low float stocks. You catch a company on a bad day when the price really falls, oh goodness, you know with that float what's gonna happen on recovery. But in saying that, Bitcoin is on a recovery right now. And as long as Bitcoin is growing, any stock affiliated with Bitcoin or even cryptocurrency is most likely going to grow. So in the morning, go jump over to Google, put in OTC and Bitcoin, see what stocks are affiliated with Bitcoin. And those are the ones you want to focus on to make money as long as Bitcoin keeps growing. Forget metaverse right now. Bitcoin is the hot coal. So. Do your DD. It will make you rich. DD. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.